Hey everybody, it's Jim from Jim's Holy. It's the coldest summer is moving right along. Uh, it's the end of July. Uh, again, if you're following me or subscriber, you know I'm in New Jersey. So we have seasons. And it's been a very strange year, obviously, with the COVID. It's very difficult. Um, it just, uh, it's hard to tell sometimes what day it is. <laughs> and anyway, um, so uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you all those coleus that I trimmed. And I'm going to show you a couple of, of plants that around my property that I never featured in some other videos if you're following along. And we'll take a stroll through the my multi-season garden. You'll be surprised. So stay tuned. You'll be so surprised to see how well it flowered. I gave it a good shot of miracle Grow. And you'll be so excited, uh, so so uh, amazed at how quickly, how, how it's flowered and how beautiful everything looks. And I'm going to show you a couple of plants around the front of my property, which I never showed you. So including some Montauk daisies, some mature Montauk daisies. So let's go and take a look. It's the magical time of the year, summer. Uh, I don't know, it's uh, the end of July and... Um, I don't want to say it's the end of summer. It just feels like it in a way um, perhaps because of uh, The COVID restrictions and how the summer has been so different this year um, It just seems to make the days um, Kind of meld into one another uh, but anyway um, this is one of my uh, favorites that's, um, that's just really, really taken off so well. And as you can see, and this is the one we trimmed a week, a week and a half ago. And as you can see, it already needs some trimming. We've had some rain the past couple of days and it's been pretty humid. Uh, but a lot of good steady rain and that just like I had mentioned uh, Does wonders for your coleus. So <clears throat> uh, if you have an indoor coleus pot like this And this one stays out on my deck all all day and night uh, But if you have a small indoor coleus and you're getting a little rain shower and so forth It wouldn't hurt it uh, To put it in, in a little sheltered area to give it some rain uh, because rain is amazing. So anyway, um, I wanted to shoot a video because I, I know uh, about two or three videos back I did a video on my all my full season garden and here we are in summer uh, middle summer I, I want to say middle summer towards the end and everything is in full bloom so we're gonna go and take a look at everything and we'll segue over to the Rosa Sharon and as you can see, we're in full bloom. And this is a white and I guess a pink lilac color Rosa Sharon. And uh, we'll sit back here. And this is the uh, Rosa Sharon that we keep our large. And as you can see, we already have our monarch butterflies all happy visiting. Let's see if we can zoom in on here. We got a beautiful monarch butterfly visiting and pollinating our Rose of Sharon. Those are so beautiful. We're gonna to try to stabilize this. Isn't that beautiful? And I get uh, so many of these. And again, as you can see, our coleus is doing fabulously also aiding in the pollination are lots and lots of bumblebees Ooh, they get a little angry when I get close they're a little camera shy so anyway um, whoop, here we go um, I got a few and again I had mentioned in the, in the earlier videos this is pretty much um, an ideal place to keep a good coleus if you want to boost your coleus or whatever or if you want to grow fabulous coleus this is what I again I mentioned consider fabulous just really really ideal 
conditions for a coleus. Getting some sun right through here, filtered in through. Lots and lots of pollination going on. Got lots of bees and butterflies. All sorts of insects here. They're just going crazy. This is like, this is, this is I, I imagine this is, this is what the restaurants are gonna look like when they finally open the indoor dining. Uh, just every, every flower is occupied by a, either a butterfly or a bee. So anyway, got some, um, these are some of those Saturns. I took a bunch of cuttings from the larger plant. Um, I had a couple of customers that wanted some Saturns, so I cut some cuttings and I put them out here because I wanted to get them to really grow quickly. Um, you know, my greenhouse is really good, but for some reason, like I said, this is the ideal place right here. If I can only put 600 plants right here. So anyway, these are looking pretty well. And uh, let's move on now to the multi-season garden, and then I'll show you the other coleus that uh, that we trimmed earlier, and see how they how fast they just exploded, came right back inside of just a couple of weeks. Okay, so here we go. Here's the multi-season garden. Now you can either go back a couple of weeks and look at my video, and then come back and watch this one, just to compare what these look like and the, and the amount of growth and the flowering that's going on again this is this would be my late summer stage and for those of you who are just um, watching my channel maybe just found my channel um, I planted this mature garden multi-seeding garden about 20 years ago basically my overall plan was to uh, plant a variety of different plants which flower at each season here we are in New Jersey so we have uh, uh, winter spring summer fall and we get flowers from late winter straight through late fall and as you can see we got sunflowers coming in the butterfly bushes are in full bloom I have a pink and a white the white is an absolute monster. It's just a monster. And we we cut these down every few years because they get so big and so heavy that they actually almost collapse on each other. So uh, this one we cut down right down to the, the base about three years ago. So it's slowly coming back, but it's, you know, we maybe cut too much of it, but actually one part of it died and it just split so uh, it was sort of a, a quasi necessity if that's uh, such a thing so uh, the cactus is done blooming I have another potted coleus hanging basket I just throw here some ribbon grass and some little butterflies again these butterfly bushes are fabulous I mean they attract everything uh, dragonflies butterflies hummingbirds you name it got some marigolds and these we cut back if you look these were more round and really overgrown so we trimmed these back because they were just overgrowing and now they're starting to get the flowers uh, I just put these in these are um, these are black eyes Susans these are perennials, they come back every year, and they're great summer perennials. Beautiful, black eye Susans, and is a monster, monster sunflower, and we're just starting to get the sunflower head to form, so we still got a lot of time for this. And of course, the weeping cherry tree, that's gonna need a little trimming soon. This flowers, early spring and the petals only last a few days a week maybe again during the spring early spring and so forth i have daffodils and tulips all coming up here they're gone now one thing with daffodils and tulips once the heads die do not cut the stems let them die naturally let them die naturally because all that energy goes back into the bulb so you want to enjoy the flower let them die, let the stem die, and then cut it. Don't 
cut it. Don't cut it the minute the head dies. Don't cut. Uh, you're gonna. It's not healthy for the bulb. So um, tulips, daffodils. I got tons of daffodils in here. And the Shasta daisies. Now the Shasta daisies are on their way out. They flowered. As you can see, this is left over. If you want to collect the seeds, this is where your seeds would be. I don't. I have so many. And here are the giant hibiscus. Giant hibiscus plants, as you can see. They're pretty big. And I still have plenty more to... Um, Bloom. Actually, I cut a lot of this back because it was just overgrowing everything here. So, um, and in the front of my house, I have some Manto daisies. I didn't show them last time, and I said I would. So I'm going to go over and show you those. Manto daisies are similar to Shasta daisies. Difference being, they bloom late in the fall or fall, depending on or where you plant them. But they generally plant they generally are perennials and they come they flower in the fall so and inside my greenhouse i have just a few plants i have you know i sold a lot of plants i have a few hanging baskets and some uh a few hanging baskets left on the bottom a couple of smaller ornamental pots and so forth a lot of these I'll give away. I'll probably, I'm going to have one more sale. So. Okay. Let's go take a look at the other coleus on my property. Okay. So here's one of my other. Now this is uh, one of the same that I had uh, in the previous video where we trimmed a whole bunch. And look, it just comes screaming back. So. This is proof. Don't be afraid to trim your coleus because they'll come back. And you just, uh, you can see, I have a little of everything here. I just make sure I top off some of the bottom, you know, the top pieces, some of the larger leaves. Make sure those jitters down there get light. Got the defiance over here. And sort of like a painted nettles. Green. So it's a nice full coleus. I just moved these out of the sun because these are really getting a beat beating. These are those two big monster Saturns. I'm gonna put them back to where they were before. And I'll show you exactly where I keep them. So in the summer, I mean in the in the uh, mornings during the summertime, where I keep these, which I'll show you in a minute, gets a lot of direct sun. And these wilt really quickly, so I, I usually move them over here in the morning. Uh, they're not that heavy, and uh, it just gives them a little bit of a break because they do wilt completely down. So I just have to water them, and they pop right back. But these are two fabulous Saturns, so let's go move them to where they are supposed to be. Okay, so this is generally where I keep them. So. Uh, this is that Saturn that I trimmed. I mean, I had it really trimmed a couple of weeks ago and it just exploded. So just so much growth, I have to, I have to trim it again. So um, it, it, it is, uh, it, here's proof that trimming your coleus is very healthy and it really makes a big difference. Uh, here's the other one, this is the original that I'm saving the seed stalks. Those are just about ready. Um, to cut you can see the, they still have some flowers on them but that's an example right there that's when you know it's time to cut your seed stalks when all of the petals have dropped and they start to get a little brown I want to make sure that the seeds are mature if you cut these too soon the seeds don't mature and you may you're not going to really grow they may not germinate so I make sure I don't rush I let them hang on here and I make sure that they that the pods see the little pods I don't know if it really shows they almost look like little cradles make sure that they look nice and full and they should start to brown a little bit um, this again this is still flowering so we're not gonna cut it but this is a really this one I'm keeping just for the flowers 
because this will be my main seed plant. And we'll move on to a couple others. We just had this driveway paved a few week, uh, year or two ago. And because of code, I couldn't pave right up to the drive, up to the fence because the water would go into my neighbor's yard. It's one of those annoying codes. So I, it left me with this space here, which I need to figure out what I want to do. So right now I'm just putting lots of pots here. And it's a pain. It's a nuisance because we got a, a lot of weeds that come up out of there. But it's not soft soil. It's very hard packed soil. So it's sort of a nuisance. But anyway, here's a little arrangement. I just threw a bunch of random coleus into a, a soft pot. And we'll just leave them out here. And we'll turn it around. And there's another one. I just trimmed some of these. This is a little wilted from the sun. So, and I just, um, just let them go. Trim it here and there. If I'm walking by and I see a couple of leaves that are kind of ripped or torn, I'll just snip them with my fingers. And uh, there's nothing really you can do. And here's that monster. Look at that. You remember, if you're following along, you remember this was two black stockings rootings that I threw in a pot because I was out. I had no seeds. And look. It's filling in, and, and it's at the end, not even, it's towards the end of July. So another couple of weeks, this is going to be even fuller. I threw in a uh, black cherry. I just threw a couple of random black cherries in there to mix it up. Um, but this is doing pretty well, the black stockings. Pretty neat. So now I'm going to move on to my front yard. I never really filmed this. I'll show you a couple of, of my larger planters in my front yard. So let's go take a look at that and my Montauk daisies. I have quite a few mature Montauk daisy plants that I'm going to show you. Okay. So here we are. This is a giant um, ornamental seagrass. Um, this is uh, about 15 years old and we, uh, you can cut ornamental seagrass down at the end of the season or you can leave it uh, I do both I'll let it go for a few years and not cut it it's nice to have it around in the winter time and then when it really gets too overgrown I'll, I'll cut it down and it comes back right away so um, so this is basically my front property I have a uh, a number of different types of plants perennials a yucca plant as a lilac bush. Lilac bush is really nice because the flowers, they come in in the uh, spring. They're very fragrant and I have my windows here. So I open my windows in my, in my dining room and that fragrancy, you could really smell the fragrant flowers right through into the house. So uh, yucca and here are a couple of uh, my coleus. I have these two large planters out in front of my house. And this year, um, I'm a little disappointed in these. Believe it or not, um, I'm gonna, I'll try to post a picture on what these, what they usually look like. And I'm going to be honest. Um, I've been doing this for a few years, and this is probably, and maybe it's fitting for this summer because I think we can all agree this has been a, a very difficult summer with the COVID. I don't want to really go negative in my video. I want to try to maintain a, a good positive vibe, but it's uh, I'm also trying to be reasonable and realistic and how difficult it has been for everybody. People uh, lost their jobs and so forth and and you know so maybe it's good to have a little hobby and I hope my channel has helped. I know a number of people said they they've now uh, renewed their interest in coleus and so forth so perhaps um, I've given you something you know, new to do to keep yourself busy while we all get through this difficult stage. But anyway, um, the color in this uh, wasn't as, as fabulous. Uh, I like to use that word because uh, it wasn't as fabulous as, as past coleus. Uh, but that's uh, how it goes with coleus. Sometimes you really don't know how they're going to develop. But it's not bad. It is a painted nettles. And it's got a little bit of a um, of the pink in it, 
And these were Kongs. They just weren't the really bright. There's a couple of nice colors. Some jumbo. I just gave this a good cut. There's a jumbo jumbo leaf, and that's a monster. I just trimmed this because it was really overflowing. The, the leaves were huge, as you can see, and they were really hanging over. There's a couple others. And I have these two planters out in front of my yard. And again, I do this every season. But this was, uh, again, these were, these aren't too bad. I have a Saturn in there. I just put those in about three weeks ago. I had some extras. I said, let me throw some in the front here. There's a little spot. Um, a little more color. Um, and again, I just trimmed a bunch of these really big, big leaves. Some beautiful. These are uh, uh, are the uh, rose sh rose kongs, rose colored rose kongs. Really beautiful. And there's another planter. And these are just random, and I'll go by and trim. If I see something needs to be trimmed, we'll just trim it. But again, maybe it was just the weather this year. But um, this is probably, of all the years I've been doing this, the, um, the outcome of these three vases, uh, three, three pots, are probably the, the worst. I've had much uh, better color in years past, so that's okay. There's always next year. So let's move on to the Montauk daisies I promised to show you, too. Okay. Now this is, um, I have another cherry tree out front here. This is about 20 years old also. Um, anyway, these are mature Montauk daisies. They actually spread an awful lot. And as you can see, they're not bloomed yet. We don't even have the heads out yet. So these are a, a fall bloom. And again, I arranged uh, the front of my yard now when I bought this home 25 years ago 20 years ago it had no plants at all this was a vacation home and it had zero plants so I planted everything here designed everything myself so I did the same in the front as the back to plan a multi-season flowering garden so we have the Montauk daisies which really take off and these look beautiful when they start to flower uh, you have those bright white, and they're really, really prolific. You get lots and lots of flower heads. And here is a giant forsythia, which I need to trim again. I actually cut this down to the bottom about two years ago because this thing just goes nuts. So it's a forsythia, and these, of course, have those bright yellow flowers, and they flower in the very early spring, as you can see. It just it's constant, constant trimming. Some uh, variety of different perennials. That's a newer perennial my wife put in. I'm not really sure what that is. We have uh, some yuccas. And of course over here a whole bunch of Shasta daisies. Which as I had mentioned. They flower in the summer. And as you can see they're still flowering. But they're pretty much at the end of their flowering cycle. I don't cut these back. I wait until they're completely dead and then of course they're perennials, they come back. Uh, one thing I like to do is I like to repurpose things and came across this out in the garbage about, I wanna say five, six years ago. And it was just a kid's toy, obviously an old red flyer wagon. It was, it was shot. So rather than let it sit, I took it and filled it with potting soil and we put different flowers in it. These are sombrero daisies. And uh, that's what I do. Every year we put a little different, and you know, in the spring we'll put um, impatience or whatever because it's under a maple tree so it's a lot of shade here sombrero daisies they almost look fake <laughs> which is the opposite usually fake stuff looks really new but these are really nice looking daisies okay so I hope you enjoyed that little tour 
as we um, start to wind down um, the coleus season. Uh, not really wind it down, really wind, I wind down the, the growing season. Now I'm really maintaining it. I'm, I'm always looking ahead at what I'm, what I'm gonna be doing next. So I'm really gearing myself up to keeping these healthy, keeping them trimmed, and planning out what I want to do, which ones I want to turn to seed, and deciding on when exactly to let the seed stalks to develop. I'm going to still let them go. Every year is a little different. Things get warmer here. We're, our winters are starting much later now. I mean, sometimes winter doesn't really start to set in until like November, where we get the actual cold, cold weather. So basically, we could still get a, a good three months of, of good coleus growing so um, that's not bad that's a nice long season so uh, so we'll just keep doing what we're doing um, I gave these a shot of miracle grow about I guess about a week ago so probably this week I'm gonna give it another shot uh, like 10 days every 10 days I use the miracle grow I have the hose attachment feeder and it really does like I said I recommend using that if you can if not if you don't really want to fuss around with that you can use time release fertilizer pellets you can buy them in the store just get basic plant food general purpose plant food and uh you here up ahead oh, again i'm by the jersey shore so we get those banners we get those uh flying advertising banners um they head out to the ocean and then they uh they fly back and forth with the uh little advertisements so uh anyway um, so we're gonna keep doing our trimming. We're gonna keep uh, making sure we trim off those top leaves. Everything is pretty much at the height I want it, so we're not letting it grow any higher. Anything that grows at this point now generally seems like it's gonna be seed stalks, so we're trimming those down. And um, so if you're in New Jersey or in, in my growth zone, you can basically apply this to your coleus. And uh, I know over on the other side of the world, there we go, another uh, plane. They all decided to fly over my home because I'm videotaping here. So anyway, uh, if you're on the other side of the world, you're, you're gonna be going into spring. So you can check out some of my early videos from when it was spring here in New Jersey. And you can apply it to your coleus on germinating seeds, uh, what, what I use to seed. Uh, plant my jiffy pods and so forth so all right so we'll uh, we'll shoot another video in another week uh, those of you who are following uh, who are um, visiting New Jersey New Jersey Shore area I have probably another couple of weeks left at the Bayhead farmers market so if you're around that's this Thursday Thursday um, I'll be at the Bayhead farmers market again about 1 1 to 5 p.m. so um, thanks for following along everybody and enjoy your coleus and please give me a comment pass my channel along and we'll talk to you soon take care everybody Jim from Jim's Holy is coleus